I wasn't going to make a video today, but I was going through my Patreon messages and I saw this one here. This person is trying to learn about game engines and OpenGL and programming in general. They've asked for advice on Discord. People just say to do the Hazel series. I can't tell you what it is, but I kind of like the Sparky series better. I think because it's perhaps a bit less professional, thus feels like more my level. I really can't tell you why, because the Hazel series is awesome. But I wanted your thoughts on the differences in getting the most out of your teachings. Would you still recommend Sparky to people? Now, normally I would kind of say no, not really. Sparky was more or less like my first game engine. I've made kind of other smaller ones in the past, but I actually managed to make a game with Sparky for like some lot of dare. A lot of my earlier content kind of centers around Sparky. It was a game engine that I wrote in C++. It supported OpenGL and DirectX 11, and we could even compile it into JavaScript and WebGL so that you could play your games in a web browser. That's right, C++ Engine compiled into JavaScript. Beautiful. I was reading this message and I realized that a large number of you who have only found my channel recently probably don't even know what Sparky is and might not even remember those days. But there was an entire video series, like a series of live streams dedicated for Sparky because basically it was an engine that came out of me only having about 40 days before the next Ludum Dare and I really wanted to actually have my own engine to make games. I really didn't want to use like Unity or Unreal I still wanted to kind of make the game from scratch in a way because that's what I did every single Let em Dare. I would kind of start with like a completely blank project in a programming language and just build the whole game like without any engines you know, from scratch. So I'd build the engine and the game basically within like that 48 hour block, which of course was challenging. And I thought, well, if people are using Unity, why don't I like create some kind of base tech of my own that I can then use to make the game and hence Sparky was born. So 40 days is when the bulk of that engine was written, not like the latest stuff that came like DirectX 11 and all that, but the, the kind of core was written essentially within like the 40 days and I made I think 25 or so episodes out of that and that became like the Sparky series on YouTube. Now because it was made in 40 days and because I think it's about six years old at this point, obviously like my skills and capabilities now are much better than they were back then. Like back then I was still learning like a lot. Actually no, 2015, so it's like seven years. So it's been like over seven years since Sparky like began. Absolutely crazy. But anyway, the point is that the code for Sparky doesn't work out of the box, it seems. Now, I haven't tried running Sparky in years. Um, apparently people are still trying to do that. They've tried to get Sparky to run multiple times to check it out. I was even recommended to try the last build correlated to the last tutorial in the series from Discord, but it seems a few in your Discord said it's old, outdated, they can't get it to run either, just to Hazel. So this is news to me because I have no idea why it doesn't run, first of all. But also, reading this message on like a Friday morning, knowing that I don't have a video this week at all, because I'm too busy working on actual programming. And sometimes when I'm too focused on like the software engineering side of things, it's really, really difficult to make videos, which is why I'm considering making like a little Studio Cherno weekly newsletter or something like that, maybe like a little blog, something very, very simple that I can just push updates to for those of you who are interested so that you know that we're not doing nothing. But anyway, I just thought it would be a cool idea to try and revisit Sparky and run it and fix it. I don't know what's wrong with it. I have not, like, I literally haven't looked at it in years. So let's go ahead and just try and download it and see what happens. Ensure the future of your work. Consider inviting another GitHub user to be your successor. That's how old this is. GitHub is like, dude, you're probably gonna die soon. So like, maybe you should give someone else your account details. That is hilarious. Okay, anyway. So yeah, you can see like seven years ago, six years ago, this is Sparky. It's completely free, obviously, on GitHub. GitHub.com slash the slash Sparky. There'll be a link in the description below for those of you who dare to like, Take a look at it. Oh, this brings back memories. Look at that logo. Look at that beautiful little thing I made in After Effects. Just absolutely amazing. Now, there are different branches, though. There's quite a lot, actually. Um, so I think Master's not even the most up-to-date one. I don't know if it's, like, maybe the Desert Development branch that might be more up-to-date. Wow, eight years ago is even, even worse. I think there's, like... Was it 3D? Oh, CLI and CLI gen, and oh man, there's just this brings back so many memories. Okay, I'm gonna go with this master branch because I think that's probably where it's at. Okay, let's go ahead and clone it. I don't think we need to recursively clone it. I'm pretty sure I didn't use sub modules for that. <laughs> there's even an Android branch. Yeah, I think this supported Android actually to some extent. Yes, it did. I managed to find this tweet. So this was what May 2015. This very, very cool, like, little photo here <laughs> of my Galaxy Note 4, which, by the way, was an absolute pile of garbage. Draw calls on these graphics drivers literally took, like, twice as long as any other Android device out there. Like, back when we were trying to ship Need for Speed No Limits at EA, like, this was, like, a problem device. Like, every, the game would just run at 15 FPS on this and, like, 30 everywhere else. Like, it was just the... I don't know what, what they did with, like, the GPU and the drivers here, but it was an absolute disaster. I remember that. But anyway... This this is like a lot of quads rendering with like some kind of light. 
happening, presumably. So yes, it did support Android. Those were the days. Okay, let's go ahead and see what happens. Now this actually, okay, so this doesn't have like a build system. This just comes with a Visual Studio solution. And then it's got a bunch of dependencies here. So I'm assuming that if we try and open this, um, in like Visual Studio 2022, uh, it's open on my other monitor, but let's go ahead and like try and upgrade this to like the latest compiler and everything. Cause we'll have to, I don't have like Visual Studio. What was this? Probably like 2015. Yeah, I think this was like Visual Studio 2015 or something. Um, anyway, it's up, it looks like it's updated everything. So we don't really care about a lot of these things, like Sparky CLI. Let's go ahead and like unload these projects because that's just like the C Sharp interface, which it also had using C++ CLI. Sparky Core is all over here inside this. So let's maybe try and like build the dependencies or something and we'll see what happens. Oh man, this is like Win32. It's building in Win32. That's great. This isn't even 64-bit. Okay, well, all of that succeeded. So let's build Sparky Core now. But what if this just works? Like, <laughs> I wonder if Sparky CLI and CS might not compile. I don't know. But I hope that's not the reason why people have been saying it doesn't work because like these unrelated projects that you don't need to run don't work. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is Sparky. It doesn't look like... I don't know if it's using parallel build or not. Okay, well, that totally worked. Um, and then we'll build Sandbox, I guess. Maybe we'll get some linking errors, because I think Sparky Core is... Actually, Sparky Core is a DLL, so that, I think, links everything into itself. Yeah, it's a DLL, so that would have linked everything. So we're in debug. Let's just go ahead and run Sandbox. And it totally works. What a pile of garbage. I hate the community sometimes. <laughs> what are you talking about? It doesn't work. Okay, so this is using DirectX 11. Um, this is, there's a 3D test as well. So we've got target screen, post effects off. We've got the number of allocations and memory stuff here. 2000 FPS, cool. Um, I'm guessing resizing and stuff works. Oof, that's a bit, bit blur town. Little font test here, beautiful. I think if we go into, um, let's see here. If we go into like sandbox, yeah, we can push these different layers on. So test 2D was what you saw there, but we can push test 3D on and then test 3D. Uh, is going to be like some kind of 3D scene. Yeah, beautiful. Everything works perfectly. Of course it does. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then you can see this is some like really probably not very good physically based rendering. Performs really well though. Um, but this is some, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. How do I zoom in? Okay, here we go. Yeah, we got like some kind of uh, some rougher materials here. We got what looks like an, a normal map and obviously like a roughness map as well because you can see these kind of <laughs> lols. This is so fun to look at now. Um, you can see this kind of lols, um, uh, you know, just I, just a texture I made in Photoshop. There's probably like the roughness map and also looks like there's just some general normals or something going on here. Uh, and then we got like, yeah, we got these kind of materials here, which we've got dielectrics, so like plastics and uh, metal here of varying roughnesses as you would have. Looks a little weird, like the curve's a bit weird, but sure. Um, yeah, and then we've got like a sponsor test as well. We've even got some kind of deferred rendering test, but I think that doesn't work, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is sponsor loading. We've got some nice large, juicy large allocations going on here, and of course that works as well at 0.5 milliseconds per frame. Look at this, beautiful. What's going on here? You guys, you guys and your like lack of projects working, like I literally just ran this, like it could not be easier. I don't understand why people... Why are people knocking Sparky? It clearly works perfectly. Uh, let's try OpenGL though. So at the moment, you can see we can select Direct 3D, right? Let's go back to the Test 3D because it'll load a lot faster. Let's try like a different render API. So let's try OpenGL instead. And then I'm assuming that this will probably also just work. Although this is seemingly giving us some errors, but no, that also works. 0.3 milliseconds per frame. You know, yeah, it seems pretty good. Oh, okay. So th there are some... Oof. Alright, so it looks like some kind of uh, seamless cube maps or whatever aren't turned on in OpenGL. That might be the reason for this, although I have no idea how we're fil filtering this. And there seems to be some kind of shader bug, probably like a, a NAN or something, causing that little black dot in the middle, which, yeah, I mean, DirectX just looks better than OpenGL, right? So let's just go back to that and we'll forget about OpenGL completely. So yeah, that is that is the Sparky engine. I mean, I mean, like, of course you can probably... There is probably additional features and all that stuff in, like, uh, the other branches, I imagine. We've even got like a little virtual file system here. If we go to test 3D, this was the actual test. Now this is going to be disgusting, just a fair warning. Uh, this is Ch this is Cherno like as like, how old was I back then? Like 20, 21 or something. This is me as like a completely clueless person. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, everything set up manually through code. I think that was kind of the point. There's no editor or anything like that. Hazel is a- an enormously better experience than than Sparky, of course. But like, yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of works. The entity component system, I'm pretty sure, is not an entity component system. I'm pretty sure it's just like, yeah, it just stores everything just like that. Um, like there is no kind of components are not stored together. I think it's like per entity kind of thing. I think entities just have components because I was going to make an entity component system eventually, but uh, I, I didn't get around to that. I mean, that's kind of it. I think there's even like, I don't know if this works in this version of Sparky, but there's also like a way I think to build it. So SPM build, oh yeah, that's right. So we have our own 3D model format here as well. SPM build builds it. So SPM build is this kind of cool utility that uses the FBX SDK to basically generate like a, a Sparky model file. That's probably why it loads so quickly as well, um, because it just generates like a like a an .SPM file. I think Sparky model <laughs> format. Um, so that's what that's what that is. But there's there was some kind of like I'm pretty sure maybe it's like in lol docs. Oh look, there's like some release notes. Damn, look at this. We don't even really have this for Hazel. <laughs> Removed Chernocraft. <laughs> oh man, look at this. So much, so many features. So many major new new changes. There it is. Sparky model. Nice. Yeah, cool. Um, so that was kind of exciting. Ah, here it is. It's in the bin directory. So there's an em build sparky.bat, which basically uh, will build Sparky using mscripten, which is how we get it to compile into JavaScript. And I think there are some kind of, yeah, see soundmanager.js. This is like, because for sounds, I think we had to patch that in manually. And I think if we go to like sound, yeah, this supports everything. Like again, we like, uh, technically speaking, I shipped a game using this, right? Like I made a game for Lottom Dare, released it. People could play it in a web browser. Like it worked with sound, with everything. So technically this is like, in a way, it's like a little bit feature complete, I guess. Like it's capable of actually working. But yeah, we had like some kind of specialized if Sparky platform web defines here, which I think were basically patched into those JavaScript uh, like functions that you saw. Sparky.html. Here we go. This is it. Look, it's running. It's running. <laughs> It's running. OpenGL Web 1.0. We can move the uh, mouse around <laughs> to illuminate. Like what we see here, this is like kind of, I guess, a bit of test 2D or whatever. There you go, running in a web browser. I'm very surprised it like, still works, but I guess why wouldn't it? So like everything works, man. All right, so then the last thing that might not build are these things that I like immediately unloaded. Um, so let's reload them and then let's just try and build Sparky CLI. Okay, this doesn't seem to build right? Looks like due to like an include path. And then I'm guessing because of that sandbox CS won't, won't build because it's trying to build Sparky CLI. So really like, I mean, if we just disable these two projects, like if we just, un- if you just unload those two projects, I mean, you don't have to unload them. You can just build sandbox and just run sandbox, right? Like you don't need to build those two projects. Sandbox CS is like a completely different application that you can see tries to use like the C sharp API. Um, and then it, I guess that doesn't work just because yeah, because some include path or whatever doesn't exist. We could probably fix that if we were like serious about it. Sparky CLI, for those of you who are interested, is basically just a wrapper using C++ CLI, which is like, kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a garbage collected C++ language. It's a bit of a Frankenstein thing by Microsoft. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you got some fancy things here like hats, ah, C++ CLI. And so, yeah, that just lets us kind of access the complete like C++ API, but through C Sharp. So anyway, moral of the story, don't trust the community.